got the 69 kilo superstar Claire Zai. She finished in second place today, but to start off with, we'd like to just have you give a summary of your day. Okay. Uh, so today was a little tougher than I wanted it to be. It uh, was not my best performance, but that happens. And uh, I ended up totaling 185 for squat, 120 for bench, and 202 for deadlift. So, yeah, not the best day, but it could have been worse. Um, I guess I'll just start. Um, first of all, congr congratulations on coming Thank in second. You. I mean, coming in second in the national championships. Um, is, is, is always a, a, a high level and I think a high ceiling to attain. I know that you had aspirations of doing a little bit better and things that happened uh, to break your way. Um, the national record coming into this meet for the squat was 180.5. Yes. Um, was there any thought given to potentially using a chip on one of your attempts <laughs> to kind of gain some strategic advantage or what was the rationale behind that? Yes. So the because we knew that I had 185 uh, pretty solidly, that was a, an attempt that we weren't too worried about. We decided to just go ahead and jump right over it. Uh, in hindsight, I think taking a chip would have been the correct uh, thing to do, but um, hindsight is 2020. So um, ultimately, 185 is a, a pretty good squat for me. And uh, if 190 had been there, that would have been even better. So yeah. Claire, I know um, we've been talking before the competition just about some of the stuff that you hit in training. Totally. Of course, you know, like any lifter that sets up certain expectations of what you do in competition, how, looking at hindsight of things, do you square the difference between training and competition? Are you making any decisions about how to change peaking strategies or training mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm. that uh, as a result? You know, in the last 10 minutes, I haven't thought about it too much. <laughs> uh, um, but... I think for me, knowing the prep that I had, knowing that it was uh, had its own set of struggles, that going forward, there might be some changes. Uh, but also, I just think I didn't have the best day. And there's sometimes nothing you can do about it. And sometimes you just have to recognize that it wasn't there that day. So, yeah. Claire, do you mind telling us about how your prep was? Coming oh, in? yeah. Um, so my prep was the, uh, what did I name it the other day? M yeah, the, the prep of Murphy's Law, Murphy's First Law. So if anything could have gone wrong, it did go wrong. I got sick like two weeks out, like terrible stomach flu. I had shoulder pain and back pain through the whole prep. So I was juggling a lot of variables to try and get that to be ready to go by meet day. Given the numbers that I was able to do in training, it was reasonable. The numbers that we attempted today and things just didn't really work out the way I wanted them to and uh maybe in the future I won't have back pain <laughs> so it's I think pain is really complicated in that we end up trying to push past it especially for these like big meets and sometimes it inhibits the ability to train and I think had prep gone differently maybe the meet would have gone differently but I think it was just a bad day everyone has them so what do you, what were you thinking about as you went out for your third deadlift after you missed out? Oh, second? yeah. Um, my thought process was <laughs> you can pull things out of your butt all the time. You do it all the time. Um, so now is the time to do that skill. And uh, at that point on third deadlifts, I'm really focusing on just letting my body take over. My body knows what to do. It's done it before and trying to not get in my own way. So just letting letting my body do what it knows. So I know um, previously you were a 72 and now you're a 69. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that you have a pretty sizable cut that you do for competitions? Yes. Or are you walking around later? Okay. Yeah, so I end up cutting, um, I walk around 73, 74, cut down to 69. The cut isn't too bad typically. Um, I had to cut to 67 once. And that was definitely too much. Um, and then 75, I'm super comfortable. So uh, it's a possibility that that's something that changes going forward. But um, maybe, yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. Again, I've had so much time to <laughs> make new plans in the last 10 minutes. So, but I've seen uh, very few level or very few lifters with your level of uh, assurance and 
uh, almost like you're able to coach yourself mentally in a lot of mm-hmm. ways. Where does that come from? How are you able to stay so level through the highs and the lows? Yeah. Uh, so I have a long history of competing in sports. I played soccer for 14 years, and then that was a pretty high level. And then actually where a lot of my confidence comes from is from diving, where the performance is not only judged, but is instantaneous as well, just like powerlifting. And so that I've worked on a lot. And then I've also, I work with a therapist to help me manage some of those like negative thoughts and work through the the challenges that happen in training both mentally and then I'm able to take those ideas away and work on them independently as well so it's a whole team I have a coach who helps my therapist who helps um, a support system that I can bounce ideas off of and so it's not just me it's a whole it's, it's a village yeah, yeah. Likewise, even though as level-headed as you are, sometimes it seems like you're able to flip the switch and go into, like, animal mode. Oh, well. yeah. <laughs> Is it the yelling? I don't know. <laughs> it's the growling. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's another another level, and I don't actually know how to describe accessing it. Um, but I am able to, like, drop down and let my my not instincts but like body do the thing it's supposed to do and turn off the active brain that has the doubts and the fears and i guess what comes out is the animal so <laughs> the growling uh, i mean w- when you're in that mode yeah are you is it anger that you're trying to channel or what's what kind of emotion are you feeling when you're doing going into animal mode i love that term <laughs> <laughs> um there's some anger there. The thing that really drives me to powerlift and to do well on the platform is supporting women in sports. And one of the things I, I think about is the inequity and biases and uh, kind of like barriers that women face both in sports as coaches, as athletes, um, just generally kind of socially the the um the barriers we face and so um i think about those inequities and those those challenges so that's part of it and then part of it is just there there isn't thought so that's one of it but that's part of it but it's mostly just um trying to trying to think about the women and the people who are marginalized in this space and and creating a path for them forward, going forward. And another, another follow-up on that, yeah. because I think you're just one of the most interesting lifters. I've seen you up close a few times now. Oh, thank you. And um, in, like, like what people see out on the platform, um, like in this animal mode that we're calling it, <laughs> you describe how you are backstage, because... I'm terrifying. <laughs> what are your strategies backstage? Because, mm-hmm. because you have a, you're, you're, I've never seen another lifter like you. Yeah, so I'm my, my focus is creating a space for myself where I am the only thing in that space. So I turn my chair around because I find other lifters incredibly distracting. Um, So other people like bouncing around and bobbing, I hate watching. So I turn my chair to either face a wall or face face a tarp or just not other people. And then, um, I use breath work to kind of like center myself and focus on whatever is going on in the moment. Um, and then I use a mantra to, really focus all of my energy at that point in time into what I'm doing. And that is, it comes from a movie. It's called, it is, where are you here? Uh, what time is it now? And what are you this moment? So, and I just repeat that over and over again. And I stare very intensely at whatever is in front of me. So, or I will, yeah. And then I also, (laughs) I also read before we start lifting because takes my brain off of what I need to do and lets me just exist in the moment until I have to focus on what I'm doing. So, Um, will you tell us about the genres of music that you're listening to throughout the course of the Um, it's mostly like women's empowerment style, um, or country music. Yeah. So those don't match typically. Yeah. They're very different. 
So I know that things are fresh in your mind and you okay. just came off the battlefield, so to speak. What's what's next for Claire's eye? Uh, well, I will continue to compete and depending on how nominations go, because technically no one got an automatic nomination from the 69s. I'm assuming they will take Chelsea because she won and she had an incredible meet um, and she was the better lifter today. Um, but depending on how that is sorted, uh, hopefully Worlds would be next for me. Um, but away from the platform, I'm applying to medical school. That's my big goal right now is to enter that arena and I'll continue to compete, but the big goal is to be a doctor. So, yeah. All right, well, with that, we'll let you, uh, Thank you. get out of here. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>